Hi, I wanted to talk about the uh, collapsing magnetic field associated with the coil of wire when you disconnect the power. I know most of you guys are way beyond this, but some of the people out there don't understand how it works. One gentleman who wrote me said he believes the electromagnetic backspike comes from space, from the ether, or from the vacuum, however you want to say it. I want to talk about my understanding of it, and I want to see if I can make it real simple, and hopefully it'll be simple for you too. What's interesting is when you take a coil of wire and you hook it up to a uh, battery, let's say I take this coil here, if there are two wires coming off of it, hook it to a battery. The minute I hook it up, it creates an electromagnetic field. I realize most of you guys know this. It expands outward from the wire. When I disconnect the power going to the coil, the electromagnetic field moves back in on the coil and it goes back to the wire from which it came. And that's where you get your back spike. In, in the process of the uh, magnetic field collapsing back in on the wire from which it came, it has to go by other wire. So I don't know if this will show up here. This is showing the movement out when you hook the power up. And this is showing how the magnetic particles, whatever they're made of, move back into the wire from which they came. In the process, they have to pass by these wires, and there, there's where you get your back spike. Now, I did an interesting experiment. I unwound one of my coils, and I made one giant loop. I don't remember exactly how big it was, but I'll just say it had a thousand feet of wire on it to make this description simple. I went out to my friend's farm and I laid this giant coil of wire out over his field and I tried hooking it to a battery. Now when I disconnected the battery on this giant loop of wire, I didn't get a back spike. The reason I didn't get a back spike was because when the field did collapse, there are no other wires that the collapsing field interacted with. In other words, on this coil here, sorry for the poor artwork, uh, you know, normally the, the field would move out and in the process of moving back in, it has to go past these wires here and that's where you get your back spike. There's also a theory that the back spike has more power in it than the input power. Well, that's partly true and partly not true. It, it comes back in a, in a quicker instant of time. So for a brief period, it has more power, but it takes more time to charge up the coil. Let me see if I can explain that again. If the back spike comes back in one second and it took 10 seconds to build up my electromagnetic field in the coil, if it all comes back in one second, it may appear to me more voltage, more current. And actually it is. for for a one second, but keep in mind it took 10 seconds to charge up the coil. There was another thought I had uh, about this whole thing. Uh, let's see if I can find some decent notes here. Oh, yeah, part of Newman's theory was that you could take a coil of wire, hook it to a battery, and if you Let's just say, for theory's sake, since we know that electricity travels at 100, around 186,000 miles a second, let's just say that this coil of wire here had 186,000 miles of wire on it. If I'm not mistaken, Joe had a theory that if I pulsed energy into this coil through the switch here, and I did it quicker than one second, I could build up a magnetic field without ever draining the battery. I gotta admit that that idea sounds intriguing. <clears throat> I mean, if electricity travels at 186,000 miles a second, and I I close the switch here. Let me see. Sorry, I lost my focus. If I close that switch, and I close the switch in maybe half a second and open it again. In theory, it it sort of makes sense that you could use the battery as a catalyst to start a magnetic field in the coil without actually draining the battery. Now, I doubt this could actually work, and I'll tell you why. What I found is that when you open and close power going to a, a coil quick enough, you get no back spike coming out of it. 
In fact, if you look at <clears throat> some of the cars they have nowadays, they have two to two to four ignition coils on them. And I, I realized the reason for that is because you can't pulse an ignition coil too quickly and expect to get a substantial back spike out of it. I mean, you look at some of these six-cylinder cars, for example, they have three ignition coils. And that way each coil doesn't have to pulse as many times per revolution. Whereas with the older system, when you only had one coil, it had to fire all eight cylinders. It had to do a lot more work. And so it takes a certain amount of magnetic saturation time to build up a magnetic field. Now, I'm going to, even though I've been disappointed at a lot of the results I've achieved, um, I'm so curious about some other possibilities regarding free energy. And one of them was this circuit here, and this is something I built and it did work. Um, this is simply represents an antenna, a bridge rectifier, and a ground wire. And this, the diodes I used in this particular circuit that I built, they were those little germanium diodes, little glass ones, the same ones you'd use in the crystal sets in the old days. And what this thing would do, I just had a few feet of wire strung out inside of my shop and I hooked, that was my antenna. Then I had a one wire going to the ground. And I had a small electrolytic capacitor. I don't remember its value. Maybe it was 10 microfarad or something like that. And I'd find I could leave this circuit on for about a minute or maybe a little less. I could actually charge this capacitor here. And then I'd hold an LED across these two terminals and you'd see the, the um, LED flash for a second. And I thought to myself, what if you built the same circuit and instead of this antenna being a few feet of wire, what if it were 10 miles of wire? In fact, what if instead of using wire, you used, let's just say, um, sheet metal that was, um, oh, let's say, you know, five feet wide and 50 miles long? That, that would be an interesting experiment. I, I know you'd get electricity out of it. How much, I don't know. I don't know if any of you listen to uh, Coast to Coast Radio, but the guy that used to be on it all the time, Art Bell, constructed a huge loop of wire on his property for his ham radio antenna. And he mentioned getting an incredible amount of power out of this loop between, between the antenna um, shielding and the center conductor on the coax. And I, I thought that was fascinating. I, I, I realize you will get some power. How much, I don't know. But anyway, that's just one of my thoughts. And one other thought I've had about free energy. Uh, in a normal inductive circuit, we've got two coils. Let's see if this works. If I put an alternating current in coil A, and coil B is next to coil A, <clears throat> we're going to get power out of coil B. Well, what I was thinking is there's something weird that happens with radio frequency energy. I was listening to a story on the news about how one of our satellites was so far up in space, anytime um, NASA transmitted a signal to it, it took like four hours for it to get the signal or something like that. And I thought, wow, how interesting. See, normal, in a normal inductive circuit, anytime I draw power from this coil, it affects the source coil, even though they're not electrically connected. But I was thinking about how when you consider electromagnetic waves being set, set free from the actual source from which they came, still being able to power something, I was thinking, well, that, that would be interesting if you could somehow produce an electromagnetic wave that didn't actually affect lo the load from which it came. In other words, uh, if coil A was your power source, using coil B would drain it. But what if you could somehow uh, switch coil be on and off just quick enough to where coil A never recognized that it had any power drawn from it. Anyway, just a wild notion. Most of the stuff I've tried never worked and perhaps it's all just wishful thinking, but just some more fun food for thoughts. Thanks for listening.